Heidi ho my YouTube peeps! Um, this is the second installment of Goober vs. Guru, the mask challenge. This week I decided to make my own mask. Um, if you guys saw my video on um, uh, juicing lemons, I kept, I reserved out the pulp that had seeds in it too. And I put that in the um, food processor with a banana, uh, some uh, Greek yogurt, um, a little bit of honey. Um, and uh, at the last minute I thought, I'm going to add chia seeds because chia seeds cause things to gel. And I wanted it to have a, a pretty thick consistency so it would actually stay on my face. Um, incidentally, I had shot this video uh, last night. But the stuff wasn't sticking on my face, and it just wasn't working, so I had to kind of do a few few mods to it. That's where the chia seeds came in. So anyhow, this is the um, this is the consistency of it. It's a nice thick consistency. This just came out of the free refrigerator, so it's going to feel cold when I put it on. I thought I would do an extemporaneous sniffy sniffy. So let's just see what it smells like. Okay, ooh, yum. <laughs> it, uh, it smells different than it did last night. Last night, it, uh, you could smell the lemon a lot more. The banana wasn't as pronounced. Um, okay, it has a wonderful, fresh, vibrant, alive smell. And um, it reminds me of baby food bananas. Now that probably sounds gross to you, but you have to put yourself in the mindset of a baby. The first time that rubber-coated Gerber spoon comes at your mouth with something you're not quite sure of, and you know it's coming and you're kind of doing this, you don't know if you want it. Finally mama sticks the spoon in your mouth and you have no choice but to go nom nom nom. So you're going nom nom nom, and you're thinking, damn, this is good. I want some more. That's what it smells like. It smells like the discovery of bananas by a baby. So, I have a spoon. I Instead of just sticking my fingers in here, because this is enough to last like a number of days, probably a full week, I'm going to spoon it out and um, just kind of put it, drop it. I'm just going to drop it into my hand so I don't even get, you know, don't even get the spoon touched. And then I'm going to put the lid just loosely on top, like so, because the, like I learned in my microbiology class, bacteria falls down. That's why you always want to turn everything upside down, your, you know, your glasses and your cups and stuff. And you don't want to leave things out and just so that bacteria can fall down in them. So, especially something super fresh like this that's going to be, um, you know, vulnerable to bacterial um, you know, con contamination, that's the word. Okay, so that's how much I have on my hand. I'm going to do both my face and my arms today. Um, I was thinking that after looking at the pleats and dry skin and ugliness that I'm managing to to acquire all over my arms, um, I'm going to start masking my arms as well as my face, both for these videos and when I'm just doing it by itself. Okay, this stuff's... Uh, this smooths out a lot better than it did last night. It's not, it's gloppy, obviously. It's not quite as gloppy, though. Um, I put it in a food processor. I'm wondering if the Vitamix would make it even less, you know, uh, you know, with the banana even more. <sighs> I'm dysphasic today. Even more, um, you know, mushed up. Um, I, I'm not feeling bad at all about doing this a second time, you know, less than 24 hours after I did the first one, because what I'm going to do with this for the rest of this week, I am going to uh, continue to use it until it's, till I've used it all up, which means um, uh, probably for the next three or four days I'm going to be using it. And the idea is I want to see if I can get a good fruit acid peel going, you know, something that you know, causes that, that skin to... It, to get flaky and, and, you know, get get rid of a layer or, or two of it. So um, I'm thinking 
this natural using this natural you know, all natural mask might be a might be a, a fun way to try to make that happen. Um, you know, fruit acid peels were so popular, they probably still are, but um, they were real popular when peels became popular. And um, I think fruit acids work really well. I'm going to get some more here on my hand, and that I'm going to put on the, put on my um, forearms, basically. I'm just going to rub it into my forearms. Well, actually, my entire arm is going to get it all the way down onto my hands. See, just putting it on all over. Covering up the the newly pleated skin that I've acquired since I started losing weight. Oh man, that's a that is a rude shock, you know. You think, oh, I'm finally losing weight. Yay, I'm going to be beautiful. No, you're just going to look a little older, a little smaller, and a lot more wrinkly. <laughs> oh Lord, the things that they don't tell you, we'd all just run in front of a truck if we knew them at 15. Anyhow, um, so this is this is pretty much on. I'm going to let it all dry. Um, and it'll take about 30 minutes. So I want to talk to you for a few minutes before I um, turn this off and go do something. Um, what I was thinking about last night and still thinking about today is what makes me feel beautiful? Um, what, particularly what used to make me feel beautiful when I was young and what makes me feel beautiful now because it's not the same thing. When I was young, I felt beautiful when I was fully dressed in drag with my hair feathered back, you know, Farrah Fawcett style, and I had on the blue eyeshadow and lots and lots, way too much pink, you know, cheek stuff, and the Bonnie Bell lip gloss on so thick that it kind of glooped everywhere. Um, and I would be, you know, feeling a few pounds down, maybe weighing in around 138 or so, and I'd have my high-waisted, you know, blue jeans on that I bought at Bobby West. My Bobby Brooks blue blue jeans that I bought at Bobby West. And some short little crop top thingy with little puff sleeves. And I would be feeling pretty hot, feeling pretty good. Um, but the reason I felt good was because I felt like I was attractive to boys. I was, I was sexy, right? I was doing my sexy thing. I don't think I ever really thought much about how I looked to myself. If I actually liked the high-waisted jeans and the crop top and all the all the makeup, I, it never even occurred to me to wonder if I liked what I was wearing. It was all about reflecting what you know Seventeen magazine told us we were supposed to be wearing that was supposed to attract boys. Um, So, I experimented a couple times, and it was interesting because I, I was going way outside the box back in the mid-1970s to even do this, but there was a thrift shop in our town. It was downtown, actually. I'd take the bus to go get there, and the gal, it was called um, Betty Boop was the name of the store, and the, the woman who ran it called herself Rita Starr. Now, I have no idea what her real name was. Um, apparently, she still owns a clothing store uh, called Valentino's that's downtown. Um, but it's it's like um, goth and skater clothes. It's not thrift store stuff anymore. But anyhow, back in the mid-1970s, um, vintage clothes meant stuff from the 1920s, 30s, 40s, and into the 50s. Um, but 20s, 30s, and 40s, that's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff from the 30s. That's what was primarily in her store. You know, bias cut slips that you would wear as a dress, big full crinoline um, petticoats and stuff. And nobody was into that stuff, really. I mean, it was a real subculture of people who were into vintage clothing back then. Well, I was one of them. And I bought some stuff, some tops, um, a, a slip that zipped up the side, you were supposed to wear it underneath something. It had a big full skirt and a tight bodice and spaghetti straps. It was really darling. Um, just a bunch of kind of kind of cool clothes from that time. Um, 
I think I bought a couple of rayon, cute little rayon shirts uh, from the 1940s that were real, real, real cute. Um, but when I wore those to a dance or out shopping or, you know, wherever, I always felt like I stood out different. It didn't make me feel like I, I was doing what I was supposed to do to be pretty. It made me feel like I was doing what I wanted to do to please me. And that was at odds with, you know, the, the climate of the day for what, how you were supposed to dress. So I wish I had been more bold. I wish I had been, had more of a, you know, who gives a shit, who gives a rat's ass kind of attitude about what other people thought. I didn't. I was, I was so caught up in worrying about what everybody else thought that I, I denied a lot of who I really was, which in turn ended up denying a lot of my future. I mean, who knows where I would be today, and I'm happy where I am, but who knows where I would be, where I would be sitting if I followed my inner drummer, um, made choices based on what, based on bold, not based on what's, you know, what's my dad going to think? What's, what are the boys going to think? What are my friends going to think? Um, I just wonder, I wonder if I had taken that road less traveled, where I would be parked today. I don't know. Um, I think I managed to um, navigate myself through all of that insecurity and um, probably poor decision making. Um, I managed to navigate myself fairly well because I am in a place now with a with people surrounding me that I adore and I feel adored and I feel more or less self-actualized. I I know that there's more that I can do to to reveal my my inner self, um, to let that person completely express herself. There's more that I can do because um, as I'm making this life gain journey, as I'm making this this these strides towards physical health, it's also really really affecting me mentally and and in my heart as well. Um, I'm finding that I'm far more social, I'm far more, I'm far bolder, I'm far more willing to tell the truth, even knowing that who I tell the truth to, they might not, they might not, they might be unhappy with it and give me flack back. Um, and that part of my self-actualization, that part of it, I attribute to you guys, to all of my subscribers and people who just surf past my channel and leave comments. Um, the interaction I've had with you has freed me. It has made me see myself in a different way. And it has made me see others in a different way. I mean, instead of, you know, my eyes just passing over a group of people, now I pay more attention. I, I listen to what people are saying um, out in the world. Um, I pay attention and I listen to what you're saying in your videos. Um, that positive feedback loop, and it's in very, it, it has always been positive with the, with the exception of the few yeah, haters and trolls, but I've had so few of that, it, you know, so what, but with you guys and every one of you knows who you are, <laughs> um, you have brought me incredible joy and helped me to build my own courage and, um, and you've made me bold. And that's a gift I don't know how to say thank you for. <laughs> I just don't. Um, so, so thank you. Um, I'm going to cry. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, we all have our crying videos on YouTube. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go let all this stuff, you know, harden. Then what I'm going to do, I'm not going to take it off while I'm um, while I'm talking to you. I'm going to go rinse it off, and then I'm going to use a like a 
a really rough washcloth and kind of, you know, smooth all of that, kind of do the exfoliation thing. Um, I'm going to use warm to hot water, which is what I started with um, last night, and it worked really, really well. So, I'm going to go um, um, compose myself and let this crap dry, and I will be back. <laughs> and I'm back. Um, okay, I washed it all off. I used the terry cloth washcloth to... I mean, I didn't vigorously rub it, but, you know, I tried to get what I could off um, in terms of skin. Um, so, I did one last night. This was the one I did today. Let's take a peek in this magnifying mirror and see what we can see. Um, okay, skin's a little red, which I'd expected. There's no... Um, There's no obvious peeling going on. I will say um, my skin is very smooth, and I think when the redness goes um, down, it's gonna it's gonna feel good. It, it it feels good. It feels feels hydrated. It doesn't feel as if it's been you know stripped of oil or anything. Of course, with the oil from the banana and the oil from and the humectant effect of the honey, that doesn't surprise me. Uh, that it feels so good and hydrated actually sort of what I was expecting. Um, so, yeah, I would say that's a win. Um, I, although, although getting all the chia seeds out of my washcloth might prove a little more difficult. They don't want to come out of that terry cloth, or off of my shirt for that matter. <laughs> so I think I'm going to change my shirt and move on with my day. So, I think my homemade lemon banana honey um, and yogurt mask was a big thumbs up. And like I said, I'm going to do this mask every day for until I'm, I've used it all up and just kind of kind of see where we're at. Um, also, my the skin on my arms just feels really, really smooth. So we'll see how that works over time. So thanks uh, for joining me, everybody. And I will see you next Sunday for... The next Goober versus Guru Mask Challenge. Bye.